and there has got to be a great deal of mutual um, respect for each other's cultures, which can only be generated by a propagation of knowledge, and that is something on a field in which all of us can work. Every one of us can be apostles in this cause of spreading an understanding that we all belong to one human family with one tremendous wealth of inheritance of global wisdom, which we are just neglecting, and we just think only of the wisdom of the one culture to which we were born. But that will not do, and education has got to be broadened. Another area of great importance is the way in which science and technology have been running out of legal control. Law is very slow to take steps to advance itself, but scientists are racing ahead with new knowledge which they are acquiring at a fantastic speed. The law is unable to keep science and technology under control. And that is an important area that needs attention. I had written about this even 20 years ago in a popular Penguin book about how law is fast asleep while technology is racing ahead. And we are unable, therefore, to protect our rights and freedoms which are being eroded by technology. So that is something which, on which I've been able to work over the years. And even the United Nations University, because of that work, asked me to coordinate a study at the request of the Human Rights Commission in relation to the damaging effects of technology on human rights. And two volumes resulted from that. And recently, two or three years ago, Harvard University was having problems with some medical research which it was pioneering in regard to animal organs being transplanted into human bodies. And I was there uh, working with the Harvard professors and we have done some work on that. And the result of that is to advocate caution in this research because there could be a possibility of an AIDS type epidemic resulting from this research which would make every patient who is a recipient of an animal organ a walking environmental hazard. So there's a, so much work to be done in the interface area between science and law. And while very unfortunately lawyers tend to be very, uh, 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 to concentrate far too much upon their law books to the exclusion of the wider perspectives. And law is a wonderful discipline because it has an interface area with practically every other discipline you may care to name, whether it's economics or sociology or philosophy or theology or physics or chemistry. There is an interface area with the law, and the lawyers have been rather slow to explore that. Now, likewise, another field is sustainable development. Sustainable development, the field of uh, developing our resources, but at the same time, thinking of the rights of future generations. The future generations are being plundered of their birthright by our generation, which is absolutely unfair. And we are probably one of the most selfish generations that has ever existed because we are using, to the detriment of generations yet to come, the resources that belong to them. We are polluting the atmosphere, polluting the seas, polluting all their inheritance to the point where we are depriving them of their birthright. So the future generations have got to be looked after by us. So there are numerous areas like that where we need to step up the level of popular awareness of our duties, our obligations as members of a common human family occupying one small planet whose resources are limited. Uh, there are many other things I'd like to talk about, but uh, I will uh, be short now and just say that there are so many fields in which the active citizen, the energized citizen, the informed citizen can carry the message to his colleagues. And this way we can generate a flood of public opinion which will register itself in the corridors of power. At present, the corridors of power do not hear this opinion from the general and from the informed public. We have got to correct that. And there is a huge amount of crusading work to do. I'm glad that Right Livelihood has given such a tremendous thrust to this sort of work that this is going to be a force to be reckoned with. And I esteem it a very great privilege to have received this, uh, this award. And I look upon it as a source of inspiration for all of us to go ahead with the task of energizing public opinion in the causes that matter and thereby ensuring the future of civilization. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.